All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Hip Hop and Fashion. I am your host, Mr. Wayne, for this week, and today we have some television, some doc, some movie producers, uh, documentary shooters, uh, superstars, makers, and superstars. And I'm going to start by introducing two of them. And that'll be Miss Maniko Bartolo. Me. Me. <laughs> and John Gunner. Thanks. How y'all doing today? Pretty good. Thanks right. for having us. And tell us, what brings, what brings you to Hip Hop and Fashion today? Well, I'm here at Hip Hop and Fashion today because I'm in town working on a documentary I'm producing about Louisiana rappers. The title of the film is Unwrapping Real Life. Okay. And it's about what happens in the lives of rappers once they're convicted and sentenced to prison and how that changes the family dynamics and them as a person and what um, tips or words of encouragement do they have for the millions of kids who want to become rappers because it seems so fun and so, you know, untouchable in a sense and achievable, you know. So what's, what's behind all the lights, cameras and actions that the kids really need to know? And I'm working with John on that, John Gunner. Okay, John, and if you don't mind me asking, how, how did you become a, a part of the uh, project? Well, I've, I've been down in, in New Orleans for about four years now. I live here, and uh, I've been helping her out with, with various things, and, and she's, she's been supporting my projects that I've been doing. I graduated from, from a UNO with a MFA in film and production last year, and I've been making my own little shorts and trying to get get funding for my, my feature film. and. And she asked me to come help her out. We get some get some photos and do some video. And I said, yeah, sure. And why not? It sounds like a fun project. And yeah, it's it's been fun so far. Cool, cool, cool. And and same question I pose to you. Well, why did why would why would you choose to shoot a documentary on that particular subject matter? Because I've seen so many kids, white, black, brown, Asian all ages who you know in their minds they can be the next Lil Wayne the next Jay-Z the next Kanye West but they have no clue of how fast all of that attention can get out of control and how sometimes the lyrics you write can come back to haunt you which is what I found in cases like uh, Corey Miller um, Lil Boosie and Mac you know McKinley Phipps they all say that their lyrics were on trial more than the person themselves right. so that's it's there's a lot involved in you know becoming a rapper uh -huh. not just you know picking the right stage name making sure you align yourself up with the right people but also when you're writing and saying those things you should think about if it's going to come back and haunt you right. so that's why I wanted to do the film and I chose Louisiana because I'm from New Orleans I live in Washington DC and I come home at least four or five times um, four or five times a year to eat and balance, <laughs> to balance work and play at the same time. So, you don't eat when you're in DC? <laughs> you only eat five there times a I year? I eat to live. Gotcha. When I come here, I live to eat. Gotcha, that makes sense. That makes sense. And uh, who are some of the, um, the people that will be featured in the uh, documentary? Well, right now we have confirmation from McKinley Phipps. A lot of people may not know him, but he was an up-and-coming No Limit artist back in the late 90s, early 2000s. So he's agreed to be part of the project. We interviewed his mother, Sheila Phipps, yesterday. And we've um, contacted Corey Miller, we've contacted Lil Boosie, and with um, BG, we have to wait and until, wait until his court proceedings right. play out to you know approach him about the project. Right, right. And, and John, and John let, let me ask you um, on this. Uh, what do you hope in terms of for yourself personally to get from this project and also to add to it? Well, I, since, since I moved down here, I've been learning a whole lot of stuff. It, I'm from Iceland originally, you know, lived up in Minnesota four years before I moved down here. And, and I, I get to see things that I would normally not see and participate in, in doing something that, that is telling the story of the city and the people who live here. It just gives me more of, of a cultural knowledge of where I live, because I think that's my responsibility to educate myself about the place that I'm, I'm living in. And since I love it so much down here, that that I spend all my time down here to eat. Right. You know, I'm not leaving. <laughs> right. Right. You know, so I, you know, that, that I think I need to do that, so that I, I know where I am, and and it just I, I know that I, I take pretty good pictures. You know, I, I know I do a pretty good work, and 
and that's that's kind of what I'm, I'm trying to bring uh, to to the project. That there's you know at least decent decent camera work presented there. Gotcha, gotcha. And, and Manico, you are you you're a, you're a at a probably an advantage in the situation that most uh, uh, producers, directors wouldn't be in being that you are actually you have physical roots here. And uh, with that with that said, has that helped in, in the development of the project of being 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 from here when you're approaching say for, for uh, lack lack of a uh, better word, somebody may think Corey Mel that would have to be C Murder, you know. When you're approaching C Murder or, or, or these different people, uh, you yeah, know, I'm I'm doing a film uh, about New Orleans uh, hip hop artists, and I'm and when you put, put the part I'm from here, I mean, does does that actually help? Yes, it, it does help and it gives you access. And that was a lesson that I learned last year because I, like John, graduated from American University in Washington, D.C. with a master's in film production. Part of finishing the program required you to complete a documentary or a short film. And I completed two documentaries here in New Orleans. One was on a program that allowed ex offenders to become teachers at Booker T. Washington High School. Okay. Then another one was about the sex offender registry in Louisiana and how it correlates with prostitution. But in approaching everyone about those projects, I ran into the, well, you're, you live in D.C., why do you want to do something in New Orleans? Right. And, but when I said, oh no, you know, I grew up there, I just haven't lived in the city since 1994, and then it went, oh! You're one of us. Well, right, come on, right, you know, right, right. <laughs> because what I hear from people is that they get uh, tired of people from what they say is the outside coming in with no connection to the city, doing projects and leaving. Right. So right. it's almost like it's work for for them, and they have to work on building trust. Whereas it, for me, because I'm from here, it's like okay, well, she understands us a little bit more. Cool, cool. And John, if you don't mind me asking, you know, Outside, what are some of the projects that you've worked on independently of, of, of this, pro this up-and-coming project? Well, there have been about four or five short films that I've directed that have been uh, screening on, on local television here for the last six to eight months. You know, that would be Tugboat, which is a, a, a beautiful story about those people coming from, from out of town to, to fix the city and change the folks into the right, right ways. Uh -huh. And, and what, what happens is they, they get changed themselves by the city. And you know, it's a, it's a beautiful little, little love story. Okay. And then uh, I did Fingers, which is, was my thesis film from UNO. And that was a story about a man that decided that it would be a great idea to put his hand in the machine to get some workers comp. Wow. Not knowing that, you know, that they've changed the rules and, and all that. <laughs> and, and you can't do that. <laughs> and, and, but, it, you know, he, he doesn't lose his hand and he, he kind of finds, finds peace and salvation and, and has a nice little happy ending. Uh -huh. And my latest project was, was Flashlight. It was a, a little rompous comedy about, about a guy that has, has bad luck with Finding, finding love, but, but find, finds it through, through the, some strange ways. <laughs> and yeah. that, that one is going to be at, at the New Orleans Film Festival Ooh. later later this year. And, and I think there are going to be at least four films screening at the New Orleans Film Festival that, that I was uh, a DP on. Wow. So I, I direct my own films and then I'm a cinematographer. And so I think that's pretty awesome that, that well, definitely. I'm working with talented directors, which is fun. Mm -hmm. and, and the work that we're doing is making it out there and, and it's shown to the world. Well, definitely. That means you're not sleeping a lot. No, you don't need sleep. <laughs> you don't need sleep, okay. And, and, and yourself, Monique, what are some of the... Uh, 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 you, you did tell us about the uh, what you had to work on for, grad, for your uh, project, your grad school project, but other than that, what are some of the films that you've been uh, affiliated with? Well, I'm finishing up two documentaries in Washington, D.C. One is titled, I Thought It Was Forever, and it's about seven couples that got married and found out that one spouse was secretly gay and what happened once they had that conversation, you know, whether they're able to move on, whether they're able to get along. Some of them have children, some of them 
were married 30 plus years before they found out. And you know, just it's kind of like I, I tell people it's like Brokeback Mountain and real life. <laughs> you know, <laughs> where that was written, this is happening right. for real. So wow. we're finishing that, finishing that up, and we're working on another project titled Out of the Ring, Still in the Fight, and that's about a professional boxer who was about to go to the Olympics in 1988. 24 hours before he was scheduled to fight, his infant daughter died. He flew back to uh, Washington, D.C. to attend her funeral and was just never able to get back right. what he had, you know, the opportunity he had because he fell into a world of crime and drugs and became a drug addict. Wow. But now, here we are, 25 years later, he's tremendously turned his life around and he has a son who's a better boxer than the father was wow. at the same age. But the son doesn't really want to, you know, walk <laughs> into the pressure of fulfilling dad's footsteps. Right. So we follow their relationship for a year and see what happens. Cool, mm -hmm. cool. Well, then well, we're going to take a break and we're going to come back with this conversation. So okay. y'all stay tuned and don't go anywhere. I'm going to stick my fingers under this chair. <laughs> <for work. laughs> hey. 